the moon. Let me sing a funny song with crazy words that roll along. And if my song can start you laughing, <laughs> I'm happy. He dances overhead on the ceiling near my Thank you for those tantalizing tidbits of toe-tapping tunes by Talent. Seventy-six trombones left the big parade with a hundred and ten or net close at hand. Quiet! Thank you, my reverberating rodent. As I was about to say, welcome to a magnificent melange of musical miscellany featuring the residents of the Curiosity Shop. It sure isn't music, and it sure isn't dancing. Ha! Huh. Yes, ha! Huh. I am so dancing. Fantastic. I always thought music had a tune. Yeah, and dancing had a beat. But we could be mistaken, I guess. Look, is the trumpet a musical instrument or is it? Yeah. Isn't it or is it? And if someone's moving their feet, while you're playing music, then that's dancing. Also basically logical. Correct? No! It's preposterous. How do you know it's preposterous? How come everything boys do is preposterous girls? Look, if we want an expert, who's better than Mr. Jones or Baron Balthazar or Professor Trivia or... Okay, we'll show you who's preposterous. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like a very old lady. George! <laughs> Mr. Jones, are you here? No, we probably missed him again. Mr. Jones? Mr. Jones, expert answering service at your service. All questions, doubts, dilemmas, cleaned up and returned same day. Uh, state your problem when you hear the musical tone. The musical tone is the problem, Mr. Jones. You see, Ralph thinks anything he blows through his pitiful horn comes out music. And Gerard thinks his flaky hopping around is dancing. And the girls don't know any more about it than we do. And, and Pam says, I'm precocorous. But it's barely sick logic, right? Oh, I think I understand. You do? Then what's the answer, Mr. Jones? Uh, what was the question? Would you mind telling this, um, boys live the real definition of music and dancing? Hmm. Uh, yes, but defining words are really in the bookworms department. I yield to my good friend, Professor S.I. Trivia. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Jones. Neither adjective, adverb, pronoun, or noun halts this noble nematode in his appointed rounds. Hmm, music. Noun. From the Latin, musica, the art of producing melody or harmony. Harmony? Hit it. Down by the old mill stream, where I first met you. Quiet! <clears throat> As I was divining, music, second meaning. A succession of sounds so arranged as to please the ear. There. That does it. That lets you out, Ralph. It can't please anybody's ear the way you play that, that tacky trumpet. 
trumpet. Noun, a brass wind instrument consisting of a long metal tube looped once around and ending in a flared bell equipped with valves. Le bookworm, noun, an educated appetizer. Mwah, magnifique. Well, looks like we can't count on Professor Trivia's definition for a while. And he never even got to his point. Monsieur Cuckoo certainly got to his. Well, what do birds know about dancing anyway? Who is putting down birds? Oh, nothing personal, Oliver Wendell. But we were talking about music and dancing. And who decided that dancing was strictly for humans? Aw, oh, come on. Birds don't dance. They just fly. Just fly, indeed. Who do you think originated some of the greatest dances of all time? Like the turkey trot, the buck and wing, pecking, the funky chicken, and, of course, Swan Lake. You wiggle like a snake, waddle like a duck. If you don't know how to do it, Jack, you're out of luck. Really? Birds dance? I thought they just sort of... I, I direct your attention to the Tri-Telescope as our fine feathered friends put on an exhibition of bird ballet. Time, spring. Object, love. Choreography by Mother Nature. are for the birds. But what about we humans? Yeah, we'd look pretty silly doing those dances without any feathers. I'd like to know how we dance with clothes on. I have some information germane to the subject of dance. Hey, the computer has some information about German dancing. The word is germane, Gerard, not German. Although in square dancing, we use the German word Allemand, as in Allemand, Lemon. Allemand? Oh, then you mean there isn't any such word as German? I didn't know that. Never mind. <laughs> One, dance is the language of the body. Two, dancing is the oldest and liveliest of the arts. Boy, that's good, Jermaine. How old is dancing? When did it start? Can I see some dancers? When can I see them? Why? Hold on, Gerard. Computers can break down if you ask them too many questions. Yeah, I only thought parents did that. All questions will be answered. I have programmed my memory bank to terpsichore from gay times to contemporary. What did you say? Here's a history of the dance.
waiting for six thousand years. I'm proved. This is an easy dance step, Gerard. It's the waltz. If you can count to three, you can do it. I can count to eight, but that doesn't make me an octopus. One, two, three, see? One, two, three. Now you try it. No, Gerard, it's one, two, three. How can you have a one, two, three when the three comes before the two? That's a one, three, two. One, two, three. I don't know there's a regular one, two, three. One, two, three. That's just the order you take your steps. Just think of it up here. One, two, three, one, two, three. Up here, it's one, two, three. But down here, it's one, three, two. One, three, two. And I always thought the waltz was easy. What's the matter, Gerard? Having a little trouble with your threes? Yeah. What you need is a little music. How's that gonna help me with my threes? Music's just for fun. No. Music can be a great teacher. Look in here. Now just count one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, two, three. three. Three 
times one. What is it? Three. Yeah, that's a magic number. A man and a woman had a little baby. Yes, they did. They had three in the family. That's a magic number. Quiet! What? I can't hear you with these earmuffs on. Vic. What's that? Is it the Chinese New Year already? No, that's Ralph making what he calls music. But I distinctly left orders with the management not to be called until Groundhog Day. Can't anyone read my sign? Mm-hmm. It says, do not disturb. Well, music disturbs me. Oh, Woodrow. I'm sorry to hear you say that. Real music shouldn't disturb anyone. It's very soothing. See? You believe that? Mm-hmm. I certainly do. <laughs> I could just sit around making music all day long. As long as I'm making music, I know I can do no one no wrong. Maybe someday I'll come up with a song That makes people want to stop their fussing and the fighting Just long enough to sing along Cause you know that I believe in music I believe in love I believe in music I believe in love Music is love, love is music, if you know what I mean. People who believe in music are the happiest people I've ever seen. So clap your hands, stomp your feet, shake, shake your damn marine. Come on and lift your voice to the sky, let the whole world sing. I believe in music. I believe. Now, didn't you find that lulling and soothing? Woodrow? <laughs> Sleep tight. Because of my superior height, I have been entrusted to deliver this important message. The program is half over. Or if you prefer the common pronunciation, half over. Howsoever, we still have a half hour to go. Stay tuned to these ABC stations. Dear, 
are. You see, it must be music. Music soothes a savage beast. Breast? Beast. Anyway, Darwin likes it. Well, if that's music, he's a monkey's uncle. Oh, that's not what I meant, Darwin. Nothing personal. But I just don't think you're a qualified musical expert. But of course I am. Baron Balthazar, one of music's most modest geniuses. Or should that be genii? You're a musical genius. Obviously. Through these fingers have slipped some of the most beautiful music in the world. Well, that's all very interesting, Baron. But we were talking about the terrible sounds that Ralph was making on his silly horn. He calls music. Alas, my syncopation seeking saplings, you do Ralph, Darwin, and myself a great injustice. What may not be music to you may indeed be music to me. But that's beside the point. What is the point? The point is about to be made by the Starlight Serenaders, a group that was world famous, although very few people knew that, except in downtown Bosnia. It all began one day as I was finishing my latest invention. The breakaway suit. <laughs> it was very effective, especially for embarrassing people, but it was a bit drafty. Since my experiments had just about wiped out my entire wardrobe, I rushed to my tailor, little Augie, to have some new clothes made. Augie was a happy fellow. A little too happy, I thought, but the price was right. After taking my measure, little Augie did a most peculiar thing. He sat down and began playing music on his scissors, which I regarded as sheer audacity. <laughs> he was obviously in a world of his own, so I borrowed a snappy two-button seersucker model off the rack and cut out, leaving Augie cutting up. On the way home, I noticed Mr. Schmutz, the street cleaner, tidying up after the annual Bosnian prune bowl parade, a most important and moving spectacle. Mr. Schmutz, who had a certain air about him, was also a music lover. Often, he would let his work pile up while he practiced the complicated rhythms he had learned to play on his trash can. Meanwhile, across town was another chap with a very special musical talent. He made his living as a glass blower, but for fun, he blew glass. That is to say, he was able to produce remarkable sounds by forcing air into a large bottle, which isn't as easy as it sounds. Oh, no. One day, for no reason whatsoever, the street-cleaning can player and the glass-blowing glass blower came to see little Augie. They soon realized they had something in common. They were all loony as a fruitcake. But they shared a love for music. Overjoyed at their discovery, they decided to form a musical group. After a brief discussion, the tailor prevailed, and they called themselves Little Augie and the Musical Tools. <laughs> uh, they practiced their entire repertoire for weeks. They opened in an intimate little club in downtown Bosnia. closed at an intimate little club in downtown Bosnia to mixed reviews and mixed refuse. Figuring they were too smart for the room, the trio revamped their act and tried it again. Everything went fine until they started to play. Unfortunately, the audience had an excellent memory and they were again showered with tokens of esteem. They practiced day and night. Night and day. Day and night. Until Cold Quarter's publisher threatened to sue. Realizing the public wasn't ready for Lawrence Welk at first either, they tried it again. This time they received an even more enthusiastic response. 
But as luck and a weak storyline would have it, they got canned again. And so our trio took their act on the road to break it in or up. By now, they were really down in the dumps. <laughs> and were considering quitting showbiz and opening a used vegetable store. But instead, they consulted me. I thought and thought and finally came up with something terrific. A headache. Sometime later, as I was peeking into windows, I mean the heavens, I discovered something quite remarkable. A beautiful girl singer who was really out of this world. <laughs> I got an idea. Funny how girl singers always give me ideas. <laughs> I rushed to my inventing machine, Regis Patoff. and invented a spaceship, cleverly disguised to look like a washing machine. I invited little Augie and the musical tools for a ride to show them my stellar discovery. They were delighted, and after some instant contract negotiations, they began rehearsing. I would have hung around, but my spaceship was entering the spin-dry cycle, and I was out of quarters. <laughs> the group was really out of sight, and soon people came from everywhere to hear Little Augie and the Musical Tools Plus One at the world's first outer space drive-in. It was one small step for mankind, but a giant step for flying laundromats. And there you are, my fascinated fledglings. What may not be music to some people, may be music to others. Have I made my point now? We call it doing your own thing. Hey! Where did Ralph go? Probably snuck off to do his thing, whatever it is. Yeah, that's right. One reason you're having trouble dancing is that you have two left feet. Really? I didn't know that. I thought they were a perfect match set. <laughs> Yikes. What Cindy really means is that your feet are all thumbs. And to be a good dancer, you kind of need twinkle toes. It's Havemeyer, the helping hand. Hi, Havemeyer. What do you want? Does Gerard really know what Havemeyer's saying? Look, when you're six years old and talk to frogs and caterpillars and rocks, why should you have any trouble communicating with a glove? The other girls are wrong. Hands. Dance? Hands and dance. Honest? Hear that? Avalar says hands can dance too. How? Yeah, I'd like to see that myself. What's it say? What's it say? Havemeyer presents Fingers Brigere with the talented hand hand dancers.
Hey, man, like you've learned a lot about dancing since you've been in the shop. Let me see how you dance now. Actually, it's not so bad. Let me try that step. We'll call it the Gerard Jump. Nito, I dance better than I thought. Okay, then. Let's do it. Let's you and I dance one together. I don't think I could, Mr. Flip. I just found out I could dance a second ago. Come on, Gerard. Like, give it a try. Yeah, Gerard, try oh, it. Come come on, Gerard. You can do it. Can do it. I got it. Close your eyes, Gerard. Imagine you're dancing. Concentrate. Your eyes closed and imagine you're dancing. Imagine you're dancing. Get up and dance to the music. Get up and dance to the music. Boom, 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 Imagining you were dancing, weren't you? Yeah, but while I was imagining, I peeped. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but if dancing is only walking and time the music, then what's marching, huh? For pity's sake, it certainly isn't dancing. Oh, wait a minute, Cindy. The kid may have some. Some marching bands look like they're dancing. Yep, and marching music always makes my feet twitch. Did somebody call for a sweet witch? <laughs> No, Gittle. Gerard was just asking about marching. Oh, Gerard, that's a wonderful idea. Great exercise. You know, it's better than jogging. Come on, everybody. Let's march. Ready? Hold it, Gittle. Huh? We don't have any band. Oh. Hmm. All right. Let's see, little gremlins. Abra Cabras Band. <laughs> Gee, I, I can't play any of these. Neither can I. Me neither. I couldn't even lift this one. Don't you have something in mini instruments for us little grumblings? Hmm. Oh, for badness sake, that's as easy as falling off a frog. Toe of a frog. Eye of a newt. Here's a mini brass band that's really a beaut. <laughs> Be 
the drum with your red. <laughs> Do you dig that sound? The big fat drum. Tuba blast. Well, I'm the crew from old UCLA. John Phillips is his protege. Cause all kinds of music come pounding out of me when I hear the sound of a Melody full of the laughter of children out after the rain. Let the sun shine. Let the sun shine in. The sun shine in. You gotta make. Simply because I simply 
I want to listen to Rag. Sing Johnny one note, sing out with gusto and just overwhelm all the crowd. So sing Johnny one note out loud. Beautiful for patient guys, the 